the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones. It's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu, and I am your co-host, TMD. Big Keish, how are you doing? Oh, we are doing fine. Another day we woke up, we already winning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, but first, I'd like to send a big shout out uh, to our sponsors. As always, Knox Pro Entertainment and Academy. You know, anything that you want to learn, professional wrestling, running a show, or even just learn to train the ins and out of the professional wrestling business, all you got to do is stop by, check out the website. It is K-N-O-K-X-P-R-O dot com. Thank you, Knox Pro. Appreciate you. And if you hear slams in the background, those aren't airplanes <laughs> flying over this time. Those are body slams in the background. Those are bumps going on. Yeah, well, we out here in Los Angeles, California. Yes, sir. Close to the Van Nuys Airport. Yes, yes, we yeah, are. So, you, you, you know, Keisha, we're having another uh, w- week full of news, entertainment world, pro wrestling news. Right uh, off the bat, I, I got to ask you, um, unfortunate news out of uh, Oregon, um, mm. Billy Jack Haynes. Mm-hmm. Uh, arrested for murder. Um, that, that right there was, uh, 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 you know, Ooh. over the years, um, if you've watched some of his shoot interviews, I mean, he just something, he seemed a little off. Um, not sure what it was, um, but uh, he had made wild claims uh, over the years over various different things. But, um, man, unfortunately, he ended up getting arrested in Oregon for uh, fatally shooting his wife. Um oh. And so that's unfortunate, but I just wanted to know right off the bat, like, did you ever come across Billy Jack Haynes in your travels? Uh, well, um, you know, first of all, my condolences goes out uh, to his uh, his family on both sides. Uh, you know, uh, even though something tragic like that has happened, uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's both parties that are suffering. You know, now they, you know, a mother has lost a son. Uh, I'm assuming if until proven guilty, that he's probably going to be gone for a long time. And also, you know, parents or sisters or brothers has lost a daughter. And so, you know, I, I, you know, anytime we hear things about like this, and and, uh, whether you know the wrestler or not, it touches, it hits in a different way. Is because, you know, a lot of the boys, it's like our second family out there. And, uh, you know, I've I've met uh, Billy Jack you know, back in the day, man, uh, with my uncles off in Sika and Uncle Jimmy, how cool, you know, I was a young kid, you know, just in the locker room pulling bags in there and, you know, as always, you know, make sure that, you know, the OGs, they all got chairs and, and stuff like that. But I, I was a big fan of, of Billy Jack. You know, I thought he, uh, you know, he was a, a, a good body, you know, remind me of, uh, you know, uh, Hercules. You know, and, and uh, he was a good worker, too. You know, his his uh, gimmick was uh, uh, was pretty cool to me, you know, with that top hat mm-hmm. that he used to wear. But, you know, it's, it's been a long time uh, since I've seen him. And, man, to be able to, you know, hear something like that that's happened, that's, you know, it's just a sad it's just a sad day for for both parties and, and the, the wrestling fans. Yes, sir. And of course, you know, for the, uh, some of the fans out there who are um, not old enough to remember, um, he had the huge match uh, against Hercules at WrestleMania three. Mm. It was the battle of um, the Full Nelsons, and you know that's how I remember uh, Billy Jack Haynes. But a very unfortunate story. Um, so I just had to get that out of the way because I, I you know, I, you know, he comes from a time that I, I just love so much, and you know, a, a, it's a very unfortunate situation all the way around, and it just even sucks more. Just to see, uh, you know, someone from the pro wrestling world, you know, kind of um, in that negative uh, spotlight. But transitioning to something uh, positive, I don't know, depending on how you look at it, uh, the Super Bowl. Did you watch Uh, the Super Bowl? Your 49ers, uh, Kansas City Chiefs, the Swifties, uh, Travis uh, Kelsey. I mean, uh, is that his name? Travis Kelsey? Did I get that right? (laughs) I got it right. I don't know how that has committed to my matter. memory. It doesn't matter. He's played for Kansas City. 
Um, How are you feeling about the big loss? Uh, man, I'm still hurt, man. You know, I, I was out there in uh, Houston, Texas at uh, TCG uh, Comic Con. Um, shout out to, uh, you know, Heroes and Hideouts, uh, my guy Steve Duckett. Uh, so I went out there and uh, I worked on Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. You know, I only did half of the Comic Con. And so I'm assuming the game starts at 3, which I didn't understand or I totally forgot. I was so freaking excited that the Super Bowl was coming. I was trying to find a way to get out of work easy and early. And so, you know, I knew I had to fly out on Sunday. The game, in my mind, started at 3. Well, that was the West Coast time. And so I'm rushing to the airport. I get there and I go into American Airlines Lounge, a first-class Lounge, by the way, shout out to American Airlines for always taking care of your boy. So I get there early. And now I'm in the lounge. I got my seat going. I get my little, you know, little snacks and stuff. I order me a Michelob Ultra Light. Ooh. And then I ordered two of them, Joey. Two of them? Two oh, of them. Oh, he was feeling So fancy. now I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for the game to come on. And come to find out, <laughs> my timing was wrong. <laughs> and it start right, it was 5.30, their time. <laughs> and I left at 2. Oh. So now I'm sitting there waiting for the game. By the time the game came on, and my flight left at 7.30, but by the time the game came on, keep in mind, I was there like at 2.30. The game starts at 5.30. You already know now I'm already kind of just start seeing things. And my, <laughs> my vision was blurry. And so I was talking to a, the, the bartender was a Filipino guy. Mm. So on the bar, I had this black guy. Who, he, this black guy, he, he looked like uh, uh, he looked like Rick Ross. But okay. he was sitting all the way to the left of the bar. Then there was this one guy. He had like a country cowboy hat on. You know, he's from Houston, I'm assuming. And then there was this another guy which is a gay guy, mm -hmm. right? And he had that accent like he's from London. And then I have a bartender who's Filipino chick. Oh, wow. Now, this you can't write this It sounds like you're drinking you, with the village people. You know, not like, <laughs> <laughs> and so, so the gay guy came and, you know, he's talking to the Filipino lady uh, like he wanted a dry martini. So he says, I would like to have... Please, one dry martini. And the Filipino ladies, you know, sound like Joe Coy, you know. Yeah, of course. Right? The comedian. Yeah, yeah. So she's like, uh, you know, uh, you want dry martini? Okay, I make three. So she goes to make the martini, and the guy's watching, and totally wrong. <laughs> totally wrong how she's making, mixing up this drink, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm over there looking. At the brother, like, we're, we now we start, you know, all the boys, we just start yeah. ribbing. Mm -hmm. Some reason, you know, me and that dude, we connected for some reason because he just always caught me looking this way and I'm just smirking all my, well, I wasn't really smirking at him, mm -hmm. but I was smirking because I was starting to feel tipsy, <laughs> right? This I already had like, you know, four beers in, a couple shots of Jack, and I'm just excited for the game to come on. And so I'm listening to all this diversity, you know, the gay guy, how he speak, the country guy, you know, just like John Wayne, you know, I'll take another Budweiser beer there. Let me get a couple there and I'll take a shot of some brandy. Mm -hmm. I said, damn. I said, okay. And so finally, finally, when the game came on, 49ers did their thing, man. I'm for sure, I'm, I'm already liking what I'm seeing. But I'm looking at the time. My damn, I got to go board this freaking flight. So by the time I get ready to go board this flight, I call my buddy up and say, hey, man, how can I download this app so I can put it on my phone so I can watch the game? Now, keep in mind, the YouTube, YouTube, y'all got me. Because <laughs> I download the NFL YouTube was like a hundred. I had to buy the whole year. Dude, this is one game I want to see. Uh -huh. But I didn't care about how much. I think it was $199 or something. So I buy that, get on the plane, right, thinking that I got the NFL, uh, you know, game on. 
but I had to buy the YouTube TV, which was like $79 a month to, to pair up with the NFL uh, app that I just bought. And guess what, Joey? What happened? I ended up not even... I missed the whole second <laughs> damn half. <laughs> now, I'm on a plane. Now, I'm drinking even more now, right? Because I got a little bit of money riding on it. You know, I'm Bay Area, I mean, till six feet deep. You know, bang, bang, I was already talking shit. And I, I made a special promo that day. You know, the air up on my on my IG. Mm -hmm. Everybody see, I was all. I saw I was you had confident. that chain. You had that chain, right? That big yeah. chain with the 49er emblem. You were really happy. You had this big smile. Yeah. <laughs> I was representing, right? Yeah, yes, sir. And so you can imagine, <laughs> three hours on the flight, not being able to see the second half. I didn't want to look at. I was in first class. I didn't want to look at anybody else, because I wanted to see it for myself and wanted to hear it for myself. And man. I got off, boy, and so I did the blind man thing. <laughs> Let me guess, uh, in the wheelchair? In the wheelchair. <laughs> that was uh, one of Uncle Fuji's and Uncle Yoko's gimmick back in the day. Oh, I know what he's I, talking about because okay. I've, I've done now, it with him before. We'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> the blind man. Because I remember I always text you when you dropped me off. Yes, sir. The blind man has reached the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, they, they don't, they, they don't even understand until we done. But anyhow, so I come out, the blind man comes out, and there's the wheelchair, right? So I go to sit on the wheelchair. This kid here, he, I don't know, he, he must have been five eight, like ninety pounds soaking wet, and he sees a four hundred pounds of one guy come out. Now He's I'm already, I'm tipsy. <laughs> I'm already tipsy. Like I can't wait to get off this plane to tell me that the 49ers have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> what does I do? I get on there. First thing the kid says to me, man, so happy for Kansas City. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, the blind man became unblind. <laughs> and I turned, I looked at him. I looked at him this way, George. I said, what is this? Yep. <laughs> oh, you don't know? I, said, well, I guess I know now. Oh. I was hot. I was really hot. It wasn't even a poor kid. If you're listening, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, I did apologize, but I was a little tipsy. I was sad. Like, 49ers came this far. That was the quickest the blind man was able to see. Um, like Stevie I, Wonder could have seen quicker than me. Than Big Quiche, can I, can I smarten the people up on what the blind man is? Yeah. Um, so, uh, a time or two, uh, Big Keys just called me to give him a, a, a ride to the airport. I'll pick him up, right? And we'll get to LAX, and whatever gate he's got to go to, you know, it's going to be a, a walk. And so, uh, Keys, <laughs> he, he, uh, he I going, have bad hips, so would, this, that, that didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I really do have bad hips. Yes, sir. Absolutely, yeah. no, no, this is definitely because his hips. Yeah. Uh, but, um, he, Shakira, he, Shakira. He would enlist me. <laughs> to go track down somebody to get him a wheelchair. But the thing was, like, he had, to get, he had to get from the car door to the wheelchair, so he would put the act on from the door to the wheelchair. He would kind of, like, feel his way around and s s slide on in the chair, and then you would have to push him and then hand him off to the uh, some worker he would enlist to push him off. And I had to get in my car because you can't park there, and so I had to take off. But he's done that a few times, but that's what that is. So if you ever seen somebody pushing a wheel, uh, Kishi in a wheelchair at LAX, he definitely pulled that <laughs> blind man card. Which uh, it, I mean, hey, well, would you rather stand in the line and, and <laughs> no, sir? But but I only do that sometimes. Well, I, you know, I, I I've been doing that for twenty years. I'm sorry, <laughs> but now you know what they got this clear. You got to pay money to stand in line aye, to, aye, aye. to go through clear. But if you're sitting on the wheelchair. Boy, all and, you gotta do is just show your body pass. And I've seen it's not like uh, people no. I mean, people flock to you like you get bombarded. I've seen it uh, people bombard you at LAX. I mean, so you know you gotta get to where you gotta go. Well, well here's my new thing too now. So what's that? You know, I uh, I'll, I'll I'll be in the wheelchair, but mm -hmm. I always wear a hoodie or a beanie or yes, something. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I see people like they're coming towards me, I kind of just bend my head down. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of snore. Huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> snore for a little bit. <laughs> but I, hey, but I do want to say this: I do take care of my service people. Yes, sir. 
Like yes, when I do tip them, I'll tip them 20 bucks. Yes, sir. They say, oh, sir, you can hear it in their voice. And sometimes it's female pussy, which I feel real bad sometimes. But, you know, by the time I tip them, you know, they're happy that this is the most they ever got as far as tip. Now, if, you know, I have a, uh, I have, you know, a certain way that once, if, if I know, because I'll ask, how far is the gate? If they say, oh, it's way down there, then, of course, I'll just wait till I get through security. And then I'll say, oh, you know what? I'm good right here because I have to go to the bathroom. But in the meantime, I didn't want that person to push me that far. Then I'll still give her or him the 20 bucks. So so the blind man is, is a good blind man. I, he has a heart. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it there. I tell you what, we're going to talk more about the Super Bowl when we come back. We're going to talk about uh, the uh, halftime performance by Usher. Hey, so, Alicia Keys. And Alicia Keys. Alicia oh, man, did you see that? Keys. Oh, man, we got a lot to talk Whatever. about. We'll be right back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu and TMD. Ha! What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is TMD. Hey, do you want to get more eyes on your business? Cool. Well, all you got to do is write us, rikishifatu.com, and we will make that happen. Rikishi Fatu, off the top. We're coming right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am TMD, so really uh, quick, Kishi. So uh, to tra uh, track back to uh, the blind man uh, technique, was that passed down to you from Mr. Fuji? <laughs> you got that from a playbook yeah, yeah. of uh, Mr. Fuji's? You don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Hey, so, but, you, it, but it worked for 20-something years. So. I see. I see. I see. All right, enough of the blind Yeah, man. we're moving yeah. on. So uh, back yeah. to um, the halftime performance. Uh, man, ladies and gentlemen, Usher put on a performance uh, of a lifetime. He had like 13 outfit changes. Uh, Jeez. Man, uh, Ludacris was there. Little John was there. Alicia okay. Keys was there. Hey. More like Alicia, please. Ooh, because mm. damn, she was looking hot, hotter than a stolen pistol. Okay. And uh, her husband, Swiss Beats, was there. Right. Um, man, I, I I thought it was an awesome, awesome, awesome job and, and, and um, collaboration of all the songs that and all his hits all in one. I mean, what, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, I didn't see it. Why not? Because I was f pissed off. <laughs> I From, was pissed off. I was, you know, not in the right mind. I was gone. I mean, I, who, who cares about the damn halftime? If all year long I was waiting for the Niners, you know. But I did, you know, I did, you know, get a get a glimpse of, uh, you know, Usher doing his thing when he was uh, up against Alicia Keys. I, I love Alicia Keys. Did you see the hug yeah. scene around the world? Yeah, I would have done the same thing, boy. That red dress, the red piano, man, I, I thought it was an awesome job. And of course, of course, everywhere, online, yeah. everyone's just bashing his performance. And one thing, what? you know. About what? Exactly. This is Usher. Listen, uh, first of all, shut up because yeah. you can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, just let the uh, people uh, perform and entertain us because I tell you what, listen, I am not an Usher fan by any means necessary. But I love entertainment. I love somebody who, like, man, I, I got shades of Michael Jackson. I felt like I was watching Michael Jackson do his thing again. He's like the new age Michael Jackson or whatnot. Um, it was uh, the the showmanship was off the charts. The the choreography was insane. I don't see how people can complain uh, about that at all. Them other probably broke ones out there. Yeah, yeah, you right. Know, yeah, just, just haters and stuff like that. So they call them uh, you know. armchair quarterbacks, uh, I, I believe. But there was a lot of that. I seen a uh, lot of hate. I just didn't uh, get it. Well, uh, from the hood, we call them broke. There, there it mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah. That's what we call them. Yeah, I, you know I, just, what I, mean? I didn't understand, and I didn't get the the the. But you can't. I bet make... you they didn't say that Alicia Keys' performance was horrible. They they did. They were attacking uh, her too. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, man, she's human. Listen, she's human. And, and she did, in fact, one of her notes was a little off. Yeah. But damn it, you're in front of a gazillion people. You're human, 
and that energy. Keisha, you know what it's like to be behind the curtain. You're about to go out to WrestleMania. Yeah. You know how you feel inside. The jitters. You're going to get that. That's natural, right? I yeah, mean, most definitely. I mean, but you, you get out there. You do what you do. And if something happens, you just adapt. And it is what it is. The, the thing is, when it's live, oh, it's live. You just got to, you know, play it off. If I was Alicia Keys. Yes, sir. And I was singing and my voice just started to, you know, kind of rattle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just would have just turned around with the camera, the hard camera, and just back it up. I would have just started twerking. <laughs> Who the hell going to be thinking about her voice? That's how you adapt. Yes. I just twerk and twerk and twerk and go ahead and just let Usher do the song or whatever. Right? But, hey. Damn if they do, damn if they don't, right? I mean, there's always somebody always. bitching about someone. You just can't be happy. I but mean, but you'd love to have their bag. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, you're right. Exactly. They would love to have the bag. If Alicia or Usher call, hey, you want to go out to lunch with me and join us for... They'd be right there. You'd be, they'd be the first one right there. Like a pit bull on a pork chop. Yes, sir. Mm. I'll be right there. Jeez. Yes, can I carry your bag for you? You know? So there was that big halftime show. All right. And um, what did Ludacris do? Uh, you know, he came and did his little thing. So uh, Usher was going through all his hits, and, yeah. and the one hit that I know mm -hmm. is "Yeah," the song "Yeah." Yeah, you know, they the whole dance, they do that thing. Yeah, um, he came in for that song. Yeah, and, and, and um, they killed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see what Stone you're doing. Cold. Yes, sir. I see what yeah. you're doing there. <laughs> I see what you're doing there. <laughs> I caught so on. So they did a stone cold over there. <laughs> it came to me. <laughs> it came, thought about it long enough. It came to you, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they did yes. a stone cold over there. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So that was it. That was his part. And uh, I, I thought I thought I was a, on a one to a ten. Not that I'm Cisco and Ebert. I would honestly yeah. give that performance uh, a nine a nine and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, as long as it's over five, it's all good. Yeah. People yeah. got their money worth. Yeah. A absolutely. Um, so that was that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, transitioning into the wrestling world, the WrestleMania kickoff. I hmm. don't know. Did you did you get to watch any of that? Uh, but of course. Oh my goodness! So uh, wow, the, the slap heard around the world. The Rock slaps hmm. the taste out of Cody Rhodes' mouth. Um, Big Keish, I, I gotta uh, lay all my cards on the table right here, and, and I gotta be upfront and be uh, and honest. I I, I am what? confused. I'm gonna need you to smarten me up. I, who? What's the main event at WrestleMania? I know there's two days, and as of right now, uh, from what I understand, day one, the main event is gonna be the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes in a tag match. Mm. Night two, from what I understand, is 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 now it's not Rock and uh, Roman Reigns. It's now Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. From what right. I understand, I could be wrong. Call me kooky, call me wacky. Yeah, might need you to smarten me up. But it could be subject to change too. Yes, sir. You know, this is all the hype of professional wrestling. You know, nothing solid until we get close to the day of WrestleMania. All right? So, yeah, I mean, you know, this was probably something is new uh, when they tried this to, to have this press conference, especially in a weekend when the Super Bowl's out there. You know, you knew it was a hit heard around the world when you have ESPN talking about this kind of overshadowing Super Bowl. This is how big professional wrestling cult is. How much the fans are just, you know, all the way invested into professional wrestling, the WWE that, right? And so when you have the GOAT of pro wrestling, the Rock himself, Dwayne Johnson, come through and put on uh, uh, an, a, a, an angle, an appearance, however you fans want to call it, for him to step in the middle, dead center, in the middle of this, this angle, this story that's been going on. Three years for Roman, a couple years for Cody. You know, here's a few months for CM Punk. Years of dedication for Seth Rollins, and then here comes the GOAT. We're going to take this to the next level. But you were able to give the fans something different when you came back. We've all seen this in boxing. We've seen this happen in UFC fights. 
but for Rock to turn around and slap Cody. You can't get no more heel than that. You got the American dream, son. Dusty Rhodes. The American dream, baby. This is my boy, my seed, my blood. You got to finish the story. Finish the story, Cody. We can't let some bullhead, <laughs> 260 pound Samoan, just gonna slap you like a little bitch like that. We ain't gonna have that, Cody. You got to fight with me. Remember, I'm in you. Get your brother, get your brother Dusty. Dusty, bro, where you at? Where you at, Dusty? Yeah. And so, hey, I think that was the best move uh, that they did was to have Rock on the opposite side. And I'm, you know, on a serious note, I'm happy that, you know, Cody's going to get his shot with Roman. Round two. Right? Yes, sir. Round two. And, uh, you know, the fans just going to probably have to wait to, at the end of the day to steal the dream match. I mean, how many... <laughs> How many people still want to see that match, Roman versus The Rock? You know, and I think if it wasn't Cody, if it wasn't Cody when The Rock came through, I don't think, it, you know, they would have, uh, you know, uh, had this type of, uh, you know, uh, decision to be able to go this route. You know, at the end of the day, it's... Uh, it's about putting asses in seats. We just bought a new company through, coming through. We got to let them know that, you know, you didn't make a mistake when you bet on WWE. We just going to show you what type of numbers that we can do. And so the wrestling fans, they're going to be the wrestling fans. They're going to take it whether they like it or not. Does it mean that WrestleMania, the box office is going to affect? No way. Is still going to sell out in Philadelphia, WrestleMania 40. So I like it. To answer your question, I like what's happening. Keep me on the edge. I want them to keep me on it because I like trying to figure it out. And today, Joey, there's a lot of smart fans. They, they, you know, they, they just got to, they got to look at it. They got to look at it and they got to dissect it and see, you know, which, 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 you know, which is the best way that they would like to see their dream, whatever. You know, so let's see. You know, things can change next week. Yes, sir. One of the uh, most awesome takeaways from that uh, WrestleMania kickoff was your family tree. Mm. That image of your family tree. And I Damn, saw... I look like a tree full of buds, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, that's why I gravitated towards you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. Hey, yeah, wow, man. A tree full of buds. Boy. Yes, sir. And yeah, I got to tell you... CBD buds. I, I, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I zoomed in on the tree, and I, I uh, saw a bunch of your family members' names on there. Yeah. I, I was so excited. And one of uh, them... Like the whole 49er team there. Man, for we, real. We got a 49er team myself. For real. But yeah. you, there was one on there in particular that I, I was very happy to see up there. Yeah. And I said... Reno Anowai, the Black Pearl, mm. on on a big WWE screen. Now, yeah. to me, that just made me smile. It made me pop, and I was very excited. I had to zoom in just to see it, but I was very happy. I saw a bunch of people's names on there. Did yeah. you have any involvement with that tree being – because they had to do some kind of research. There was a lot of names on there. Did they contact you? Did you have some kind of involvement with getting those names up there? Well, hell, we've been there for 75 years. I mean, you would think by now they would put files down for family members, past, present, and future. You know, so yeah. I mean, they, they, they've 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 been known. They they've had that chart for many a time. So of course, uh, the world has never seen that chart right displayed like that. Right. And, you know, and to be able to have a person like Rock, you know, display that. You know, it, it was cool. You know, it was real cool. I was I was actually very. Uh, I was blown away, you know, to be able to see that. The lineage. And, and uh, you know, the whole family members that, I mean, it, 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 you know, fans, it just goes to show you how much that our family has given to this industry. Um, 
you know, we were taught from an early age, obviously from our, I like to call our three fathers, uh, Alfon Sika and High Chief Peter Maivia. And the teachings, and we, man, we're talking 75 years ago, man. You know, uh, the teachings that they've taught us has never changed. You know, from the next crew that came up underneath them, which is, you know, myself, uh, you know, Yoko, Samu, the Tonga kid, you know, with the rock and so forth. And then, you know, he has, you know, his kids and we have our kids and, and the teaching still stays the same. You know, you can tell that, you know, for many of years, you know, our culture has had a big part of playing the Samoan dynasty legacy. Samoan people are where we come. We come from uh, grandparents that are preachers, you know, preachers' daughters, preachers' sons. So that is faith. And then the culture of real shoot high chief's names that these names here on white my via and fatu are respected names in our culture everyone knows these names everyone respects these names and also we respect other matai culture names that are in samoa uh, as well but coming from the islands and joining into the professional sports entertainment world wasn't easy wasn't easy by all means for my uncles coming through when the back of the day was a lot of racial profiles you know bookings were territorial imagine you have guys with dreadlocks dark skin you know Romans uh, my uncle Sika's uh, wife is white Italian, Roman's mom and Rosie's mom. And you have Uncle Alpha, same. And you can imagine them driving through the back roads of Mobile, Alabama with a white towel over their head, leaning back, covering themselves while their wives drive through these towns to get to the next town to get the bookings. Peter might be the same way. And then as we come through, the business changed a little bit. When you have guys like myself, Yoko, Samu, The Rock comes through, the Tonka Kid, Uncle Jimmy, Aku, and those guys. The business kinds of changed a little bit, but it still was that. It still was that. It wasn't like there was given to us. There was nothing given to us. We had to work hard because we wasn't figured in, Joey. But they couldn't deny us because we can make anybody. We were so damn good that we would make a broomstick look like a superstar. You're talking about perfecting your craft. You're talking about the passion. You're talking about the pressure that you carry with your last name, the legacy that you come from the forefathers of the three fathers before us, the responsibility. And those are passed down to the Usos, to Solo, to Roman Reigns, to Jacob Fatu, Reno, Anuai, Lance Anuai, Manu, Tonga Kid, Journey, Zilla. So it goes on and on. I mean, even the girls in the family as well. Tamina, Trinity. So, when we talk about the bloodline, the bloodline will always, always, and I'm going to go on record, you put us in the right spot, we're always going to put asses in seats. You can always depend on the bloodline to draw that money. But here was what I'm saying. Hopefully, by the time my young boy comes through or my grandkids, if they decide to come through the business, I want them to understand, 
to know that they come from a legacy that has definitely worked hard in this industry. They come from a legacy that is respected in this industry. And I just want my babies to get, to understand and know their worth, that they are worthy to be able to, if the other person's making a million point five during that match, well, damn it, I want my baby to wake a million point five. So that's my input of what I felt about this. Uh, the family tree. The family tree. It was amazing. It was such an awesome sight and very, very, very proud of the, of that legacy that you guys continue to this day to uphold. Um, before we take off, uh, is there any last words you have? There was a lot of interaction this week with the podcast. Yeah. A lot of fans tuning in. Um, mm. Thank them. Yeah, man. Yes, thank you, yeah, fans. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank everybody. You, you know, know? Uh, pretty soon we're going to turn over to the fans, ask you guys questions, send in your questions. If you have questions you want me to read off to Big Keish, man, by all means, send them in. But a lot of positive interaction out there. And, um, yeah, um, do you have any last uh, words uh, today before we um, take off? Well, I want to say thank you. Personally, say thank you to all the fans. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, researching the numbers from my team, you know, you definitely, you, uh, the fans have definitely showed up and showed out. Thank you for all the liking, the subscribing. Thank you for all the comments. I do see the comments that's going through there. And please, you know, anything that you guys, that you feel that you would like for us to talk about, that by all means, you know, fan engagement. Yes, Put it all down there and make sure you follow all the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top podcast. Make sure you follow my co-host, TMD Entertainment, and also make sure you follow yours truly. Of course, all my pages are the verified page. So remember this, it's free to be kind to one another and always, always smarten up. Would you like to be a sponsor of the show and get your product worldwide known? All you got to do is just hit the link, tap into rikishifatu.com. It's time to smarten up. It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen.